welcome to Module 5 on Activity-Based Costing. Our course so far has been pretty obsessed with the idea that figuring out how much stuff costs when you make a product, your company makes a product, figuring out how much it costs is difficult and important. And this chapter is no exception. It adds to our knowledge in that area. So what we've learned so far is that actually dealing with material is pretty straightforward. You just figure out your actual material cost. So if our company makes cupcakes, you know, the cost of the eggs and the sugar and the oil, cooking oil or whatever product that directly, the cherries, whatever goes directly into our cupcake, that uh, you just use the actual number to figure out your cost per cupcake. Same thing with the labor. You figure out the actual wage rate and you figure out how long the person worked and maybe we're making large batches of cupcakes. So you can figure out the labor cost per batch and then divide and, you know, get a cost per dozen cupcakes or even a cost per cupcake just by doing some simple math there. But we said what we said was the overhead is way more difficult. You know, you might not know your property tax bill or you might not know your utilities cost for a month and you got to figure out how much that costs per cupcake or per batch of cupcakes. It can be very difficult and we've learned to apply overhead. So applied just means estimated, right? We've applied overhead costs to jobs. Now, uh, before I move on, I just want to comment on something. I spent over 40 minutes drawing this cupcake. I don't think it was a good use of my time, but I just want you to admire it for a, for a couple seconds before we move on. All right, the, I'm not an artistic guy. I, I was copying a clip art thing, like I was drawing it by hand beside the clip art. But I just wanted to point that out because we're we're, we're going to zip right on past the cupcake. If I can zoom out here, that would be great. Oh boy. Okay. So, in the traditional method, what we do is we okay we figure out our estimated overhead. So we might have these as our overhead costs. We get an estimated total overhead. We divide that number by an estimated activity, maybe direct labor hours or something that drives overhead, and uh, we get a predetermined overhead rate. So in this circumstance, let's say we've estimated our overhead to be $100,000 based on some cleaning supplies, some utilities costs, supervisor salaries, assuming the supervisor doesn't have their hands on the product, and some general kitchen administrative costs. Let's say this company, you know, they look at the direct labor workforce and they say they're going to work about 10,000 direct labor hours this period or this year. Uh, what is our overhead rate? Well, it's $10 per direct labor hour, and that's an MOH rate. So whenever my employees work an hour, we apply $10 worth of overhead cost to that job or to that batch of cupcakes or whatever it is we're applying a cost to, right? Just as an estimate or a stand-in for that overhead cost until the actual costs come in, until the actual costs are known. So this method works for a lot of companies. It's a very simple method, but it's just, a, everybody knows it's not perfect, but you know, you get, if you're in the ballpark, it's not so bad. Some companies though find that it's not accurate enough for them. They have way over applied, way under applied overhead. They have some weird things going on in their costing system. Maybe they're selling more products, but making less money. And they're going, something's off about my cost. Something smells funny here. In those circumstances, Companies that are looking for something a little bit more accurate might move to an activity-based costing system. An activity-based costing system says, one overhead rate is not enough. We need several. We have so many different kinds of overhead. So for example, every time we're doing cleanup, uh, maybe direct labor hours isn't a good proxy for that. Maybe it's like the number of setups, right? Every time I set up, I have to clean up. So if I just count my shifts or my setups, then, you know, that's going to be a good proxy for cleaning, uh, uh, cleaning up. Maybe utilities costs, you know, that's based on our stoves and ovens being on. That's based on our machine usage. Maybe it would be better to divide by machine hours. 
uh, supervision costs, maybe a more accurate measure of how much our supervisors are working is uh, I have to bring them in more when I have big orders or less when I have fewer orders. Maybe it's the number of orders that drives my supervisory needs. General Kitchen and Min, let's just say that is based on direct labor hours, or that's at least what we would estimate. Well, now, based on this new system, we have four overhead rates, not just one, we have four, but we might get better data out of our system. That's the hope of an activity-based costing system. So with a, a traditional costing system, you just use one overhead rate and you say, okay, this is an educated guess. I know it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be hopefully close enough. Some companies find it's never close enough. If they want to do a little better, they use activity-based costing. Most companies don't do that. Most companies say, you know what? The simple method is good enough. I don't need to be tracking all this extra data. It comes with a lot of extra expense to track all the extra data. I'm just going to use one overhead rate. But some companies who find their costing system isn't working, their estimates are bad estimates, would be wise to switch to this kind of system. So we're going to do lots of examples on activity-based costing this module. So stay tuned and we'll jump into some examples. That's all for this video. See you in the next one. Bye for now.